Ladies and gentlemen, boys, and yeah, welcome to episode 131 of the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm um, currently uh, in the Airbnb uh, on a Sunday night at like 9 p.m. Brisbane time. So I'm going to try and be a little bit quiet. I probably won't be going, yeah, for <laughs> I can't do that. I'll get fucking noise complaints. Uh, <clears throat> so it's uh, Sunday night. I uh, just got back from doing the radio show via Link Up Interstate with Luke, which is always kind of weird. Like, it's essentially just like a million dollar Skype call, and you kind of have to fucking pretend that you're in the same room. I don't know. It's fucking strange. But we pulled through. It was a good show. Oh, also, uh, we're up to current with all of the Luke and Lewis podcasts. So if you guys want to go and listen to them, they're, they're all out now. We've finally caught up. Uh, Radio Mike didn't want to do them anymore, which was fucking fair enough because he wasn't getting paid for it. So now we found somebody else who helps out on the show to do it, uh, also for free. A <laughs> uh, bit of slave labor going on. Um, man, I've been having such a good time on this fucking tour, dude. Um, sorry, I've been having such a good time on this tour, man. I feel like the show's getting so good. Um, what have we done since I last spoke to you, cunts? I've uh, done Gold Coast, uh, probably a few others on a goldfish. Uh, but man, I just did Brisbane last night. 450 people in a theatre. Biggest I've ever done by far. The, the, the second biggest was like less than 300. So to go from less than 300 at my comedy special to jump up to 450 people... It was crazy, and it's, it was weird. We were talking. I was talking about it with the tour manager Adam. We booked it because you know numbers wise it made sense. But then I, I think we just kind of ignored it. Like we had all these other shows, the smaller ones, like Gold Coast was like one fifty, and uh, then we had like one in fucking uh, Bendigo that was only eighty, and and then we had like a couple that are two hundred. But now we're in like the big zone. You know, we've got we just did Brisbane, which was four fifty. Sydney's coming up, which was huge as well. Melbourne. I'm doing two fucking giant shows and I think we were just kind of ignoring that that, that was not not ignoring it but just like not being like fuck this is coming um, and it was crazy man 450 people just hearing the roar of it there was there was nothing nothing like that man so thank you so much to everyone uh, from Brisbane who came out to the show it's it honestly was one of the best performances of my life and and not because I not because like not just like, like I did really well, which I did. I was for me, it was one of the best, you know, one of the funniest shows I've done. But like, actually enjoying it, it was some of the most fun I've had uh, on stage as well. Like just fucking, we got it filmed as well. Um, so I was fucking with the camera guy because there was a guy, <laughs> there was a guy who was on stage filming me, and he was getting a close up shot. So it was a really important shot, and and it was like only shoulders up. So he had to really focus and make sure the camera was moving with me because otherwise if you would just lose me and it'd be really hard to get back. So I walked right up to him and the closer I am, the harder his job is. So I walked right up real close and I started saying, hey, you can't look at me, can you? If you look at me, you're going to fuck up your job. And I just started messing with him. And I don't know, it was just a fucking, it was a really fun show. And Brisbane is always mental. I love performing in Brisbane. Um, and yeah, man, we, <laughs> it was funny. Like we got... No, you'll see this in the tour vlog that'll come out. I'm going to drop the next tour vlog on Tuesday, and that's like Adelaide and a couple of other shows. Uh, and then the one after that will have Br Brisbane, Gold Coast, and, and all that shit. <clears throat> um, but it's funny, man. Like you'll see, you'll see this in the vlog. Like we got to the, it was so big, not just the actual stage and the and the the, the seating area, but everything about this place was huge. It was like at this university. It was this place called Gardens Theatre. Um, and we got in and we went up like three flights of stairs and we got into the performance area and we came in and there was just this fucking giant room and I was like, holy shit, this is huge. And then I kept walking in and I realized, holy shit, this is the stage. <laughs> like the stage, no shit, was probably as big as, as the, the Bendigo venue that I did. Like that's how fucking huge this thing was. And then you, you look out and all of the seats and like, I don't know, it was just, I'm raving on about it. It was just fucking uh, amazing to do. And to do it at, you know, I'm only 24, man. I'm doing 450 people. That's fucking, I don't know. I didn't want to get off stage. I didn't want to finish the show. 
uh, but I had to meet everyone afterwards and, and holy shit, that was a marathon. That was hard, man. I mean, I loved it, of course, but like it was hard just after performing for an hour 20, fucking screaming for two hours before the show about, holy shit, we're going to do this, getting hyped up for it. And then after doing the show under hot lights in a stupid jacket that's really hot, I don't know why I chose it to wear, then going out and meeting 450 people that took hours and standing up for hours and like just the emotional energy of, of meeting everyone and trying to make sure that everyone gets a, a chat and a hello and a thank you and because I appreciate people coming that was crazy I, I, I uh, probably shouldn't have done it actually probably should not have met everyone afterwards because like it cost me more money they were like we, we were like I'm like I don't care how long it takes I'm gonna meet every single person and then we go out and then the meet and greet goes on for an hour. And then the, the venue boss goes up to the tour manager and goes, um, all right, so uh, you have to leave. <laughs> and there's still like 300 people left. And we were like, fuck. Well, so it ended up costing me more money to meet people. Uh, but I don't know, man, uh, you, you got to do it. I, I'm saying that it was worth it now. I haven't seen how much more money it'll cost me yet. We should get that email in a couple of weeks. Next week's podcast could be like the fucking... <laughs> the fucking spearhead helped me on broke podcast um, but I appreciate everyone who came out to the Brisbane venue it was, it was fucking awesome and really cool to do and we've got some great shows coming up too we've got um, we've got uh, Sydney one of the shows sold out we've added another one uh, we've got Wollongong we've got Newcastle both of those have tickets left as well uh, and then we've got a sold out Melbourne and then we've added an extra Melbourne as well um, are there more than that? I've got to check I'm such a fucking goal uh, and yeah, the show's really, really coming along now. Like I feel so confident in it, and I've and yeah, I've just been doing uh, so much shit. Yeah, Newcastle, Sydney, Wollongong, Melbourne. Fuck, it's almost over, dude. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shit, man. Six shows, four cities. Uh, IV is almost over. So I'd love to see you guys there. If you don't have tickets yet, um, grab them because they're going really quick now. Especially now that it's all fucking happening um so thank you brisbane thank you gold coast and uh everyone else who's seen the show so far i'm gonna stop talking about it um all right man what's been happening on this fucking tour dude oh my tour manager is obsessed with culture kings he's fucking obsessed with it every every everywhere we go every single city i've i've been to culture kings more often than i have uh, in, in, i've been to culture kings more often in the past two weeks than i have in my life like, I've been, to, before this tour, I've been to Culture Kings uh, twice. On this tour, just today, I went for the fifth time. Every single, it's, he's making his fucking mission to go to every single Culture Kings. He's just one of those cunts where he wears, I don't know if you see it on Instagram, I, I'm always making fun of him. He's always wearing like those, those stupid fucking long t-shirts that are like a dress and they've got dumb, unnecessary details. Like, oh fuck it, we'll put a zip on the side. And then we'll put some tassels on the other side. And it's like not there for any reason other than to make a $20 t-shirt cost $70 instead. And pick dumb cunts are like, yeah man, streetwear, I'm fucking swagged down. And then the, the staff of the, every single person working at Culture Kings is like this hectic, racially ambiguous person that's just pretending they're African American. Like they could be any, they could be, they could be fucking Vietnamese Australian and they're like, yeah, I'm black. I'm from New York. Um, so I'm getting sick of the fucking Culture King shit, but uh, it's always good to take the piss out of your mates. Um, I've just been fucking bullying him. Dude, he told me he spends $50 on hats. Like, that's like on snapbacks, dude. He's that cunt. He has, I've, he, I've, on this tour, I've seen him buy three hats. It's fucking mental. I asked him how many hats he had, and he, he goes, literally, I think I have about 150. 150 hats? Maybe it's time to get a hobby. <laughs> 150. Where the fuck do you put 150? Oh, dude, I've been to every Culture Kings in Australia. I actually literally will be going to every Culture Kings in Australia because this cunt keeps dragging the whole team along for a fucking browse. And they all have the same shit. I've been to every Culture Kings in Australia and dude, they don't have 150 hats. He's turning his whole fucking bedroom into a Culture Kings. Did you imagine bringing a girl home? You bring a girl home, you say, hey, welcome to Culture Kings, baby. Hang on, let me get out my fucking 
Let me go to, let, let me go to Condom Kings to get out my fucking dom. He just, he just pull out this drawer next to his 150 hats. There's like a selection of 60,000 different brands of condoms. And then she just fucking leave. <laughs> Fuck, man. Uh, but yeah, I've been really enjoying being on the road. We, we're starting like the... Um, we're starting the, the driving part of the tour. I've never done the driving part. I mean, because I don't drive. Uh, so we're going... We're going to drive from Brisbane. I mean, we already did it. We flew to Brisbane and then we drove to Gold Coast, which was like two an hour or so, hour and a half. Then we came back to Brisbane. We're staying here. And then now we're going to go drive down to Coffs Harbour, then to Newcastle, then to Sydney, then fucking wherever else we're going. So it's, it's really cool. Like, we're not coming home for about two weeks and we're just doing show after show after show. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I feel, so, I feel sorry for Adam, the tour manager. Uh, we are traveling with me, uh, the photographer, uh, Greeley, uh, and him. And uh, me, the photographer, and Greeley don't drive have no license so this poor cunt is going to have to do the entire two week fucking drive by himself with no help no brakes so hey guys i might die on the road but that's okay i've got the brisbane show uh out of the way if i die on the road just release that shit and uh, everyone can see me make fun of the fucking camera guy i actually don't know what i'm going to do with the footage hey uh people ask me oh you're going to do a comedy special with it and i'm like ah. Eh. No, uh, because, you know, I only spent, I, I didn't spend much money on it. I just wanted it filmed so that I had it, uh, mainly for me. But um, I think what I will do is I'm just going to burn some of the more, some of the jokes that are like about current news uh, that won't, won't be, well, will be funny, but won't be very relevant in a couple of years. Like you'd have to remember what I'm talking about. So I'll put those out after the tour is done. And then I might put out some crowd work and stuff, but I'm not putting out the whole show. Probably maybe fucking 10 minutes of it will actually end up being out there. I just kind of wanted to just, you know, just something for me to remember and something to just keep in the hard drive, lock it in the vault. I've got so much shit in the vault. Um, so that'll be good to do. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be a comedy special. Those are too expensive and too fucking hard to do, um, <laughs> to do uh, every year, so... We'll see, man. Um, man, what else has been happening? Dude, I've been reading this fucking book, right? I was reading, I'm re reading, like, going through the Horace Heresy. I'm trying to smash through this. 50, 53 books now, I think it is. And I'm 15 books in. In the last year, I've read 15 books. But every time I read one, they write two. It's fucked. It's, it's like a fucking, it's like I'm trying to swim uphill. It's impossible, man. But anyway, I'm reading this book and I was really enjoying it. Uh, what was I reading? I was reading The Burning of Prospero, which is a fucking great book written by Dan Abnett, which I think is the best science fiction author in the world. But I know that you cunts don't care about that at all. Uh, I was reading this, right? And, and I was loving it. I was fucking loving it. It was so good. I think he's one of the best writers uh, currently working in science fiction, right? But there was this character that came into the book about halfway... And his name was Two Blades because he had two blades. And for the whole rest of the book, every single time Two Blades came in, all I could do, I couldn't like read it normally. Every time he'd come in and they would write down Two Blades, I'd be like, Two Blades. When, even when it was like a really serious moment. And I was like fucking mind Tourette's because I was reading it. I wasn't saying it out loud, but my brain was going, Two Blades! I think this podcast has turned me insane. But the, the worst part about it is, man, is I am still undecided whether that ruined the book or made the book fucking awesome. You know? Like every time I'll be like, Two Blades! I'm going to get kicked out of this fucking hotel. So, Burning of Prospero, if you want to fucking ruin a reading experience for yourself with shitty podcast jokes. Man, you know what? You know what has been really shitting me? I've finally, guys, I've finally made it to Qantas. I finally made it to Qantas after years of eating shit on Tiger and Jetstar. This tour, I took three Qantas flights, right? I mean, I still ate shit, Tiger and Jetstar for most of it, but I took 
three Qantas flights. And man, it's the fucking best, dude. They serve you food. <laughs> and it's not good, but it's free. It's fucking there, man. They give you food. They give you water for free. No shit. When we took our first Qantas flight, it was me, tour manager, photographer. They came around. They gave us food for free. We were like, fuck, man, this is crazy. And then they came around with a drinks trolley, offering everyone drinks, Coke, tea, coffee, water, all that shit. And then they get round to us, and I'm like, nah, well, I'm not going to fucking buy anything. The flight's only like four hours. I guess I'll just like dehydrate to death. I can't afford it. And then my camera girl, she goes, oh, um, I, I want a Coke, but like, how, how much are the Cokes? And the flight attendant goes, oh, the drinks are free, honey. This isn't Tiger. You're flying Jetstar, darling. And it was just like the most, oh, look at this poor peasant coming from Tiger and Jetstar. Thinks she has to buy drinks like a fucking dork. Poor girl, she hasn't seen the light yet. Because Tiger and Jetstar, they just walk down the aisle, spitting in your face. Like, welcome to Tiger. <laughs> Jetstar's a little bit better than Tiger. So in Tiger, they come down the aisle and they spit in your face. But Jetstar, they, they come down like wanking and they just come in every fucking aisle. I don't know how they do it. It's like 40 different cums all the way down the plane in like rapid succession. It's like they're like machine gunning cum down at everyone. Because it's like three people per row, right? And then there's like 40 rows. So what's that? What's three hundred and twenty comes in like five minutes? It's like that's fucking amazing, man. <laughs> but this is the thing about other states, dude. Uh, other states can't do fucking cafe food. They can't do it. They don't know how to do it, man. And it makes me mad, right? In every single cafe I've been to, all I want, right, and you guys will agree with me, okay, this is my first world, white privilege, millennial, cafe entitled fucking rant, number 637, even though I've only done 131 podcast episodes, I've been doubling up on rants, right? If I order smashed avocado, right, smashed avocado is toast. Avocado, eggs. Toast, avocado, eggs. Eggs, right? With an S. Two eggs. Two eggs! That's what I want. I want two fucking eggs. That's the recipe for smashed avocado. Okay? That's what it is. But all these fucking cafes outside of Melbourne seem to think that smashed avocado is toast, avocado, no eggs. Hey, that's not a meal. That is a fucking sandwich. That's not even a sandwich. That's half a sandwich. All right? If you're going to do that, give me another piece of bread. And I'll eat my fucking avocado sandwich like a dickhead. No. You poach me some fucking eggs now. Two eggs. That's what it is, man. It's fucking avo toast, two eggs. This one place I went into had the fucking balls. They had the fucking audacity, right? To, to put on their menu, smashed avocado. And it was like avocado toast and then, egg, $3 extra. Not even eggs. Egg, one of them. One egg, hey, hey, no, all right? I'll go down to fucking Coles and buy 12 eggs and throw them at your fucking building. Eggs, for free. Charging me $18 for some Fucking avocado spread on bread. Not a meal. Not a meal. That's a fucking appetizer. That's like... That's like going, hey, we serve burgers, but the patty's gonna cost you extra. Hey. Eggs. Free. 
Oh, fuck off. <laughs> That's the rules. That's the fucking rules, man. And, oh, but the, the only thing that sucks about Qantas, man, is they, 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 uh, the exit row, they charge for it. They charge people to sit in the emergency lane. Meaning, the only people sitting in the fucking emergency lane are old rich people. Meaning, if the plane crashes and somehow we survive, which we won't, who's going to save us? The wealthy 60-year-old dude with arthritis. That's who I'm fucking trusting my life to, huh? Is it? Is it? charging for the fucking you should pay me for sitting in the exit row i mean you do pay me i get extra leg room you get someone who's fit able and willing to assist in the unlikely event of an emergency i mean when i agree to that i'm lying of course but i'll open the door for sure i'll open the door and then i'm leaving i'm not helping no sir i will not help women and children first oh yeah really hey man welcome to equality i'm off the plane first i'm gonna take the slide with me fuck the women and kids they can bake <laughs> fuck the women and kids they can bake so yeah man Oh man, when we landed in Gold Coast, this was the most Gold Coast shit ever, right? We land in Gold Coast. Oh no, we, t we, took, we, take off from, we took off from Perth, I think, I can't remember. Flew from Perth to Gold Coast, I believe. Yeah, I think that's how it happened. So we fly out of Perth, and the captain goes, he gets on, everything's normal except for the captain's voice is like, Yeah, good age, captain speaking, uh, we're coming out. And, uh, and it was like the most bogan voice. I've ever heard on a fucking plane. He was like, yeah, g'day, g'day guys, it's Captain speaking, we're flying out of Perth, and uh, we're going straight to the Gold Coast, so it's going to be uh, going to be about a three hour flight, and uh, you've got some in-flight entertainment system, and uh, all this kind of shit, mate, so uh, fucking strap in, put your seatbelts on, listen to the listen to the flight attendants, uh, I know they can be a little bit bitchy, if you know what I mean, <laughs> but uh, fucking enjoy the flight, can't. Like the most bogan airline pilot I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, dude, this guy's going to do a fucking burnout before we take off. He's like, all right, guys, if you check out uh, your left window, if you've got a window seat, you can see me doing some fucking mad doughies. So give me a woo-hoo. Yeah, fucking check the smoke out. Oi, oi, dude, I'm going to do a skid. I reckon I can make the plane do a mono, eh? I felt like he was going <laughs> to he was going to fucking lower the suspension on the plane. Oh, man. Um, oh, at the, at the Brisbane show, after the show, I, I'm sorry I didn't get to talk to everyone. I was just trying to make sure that I got to meet everyone. And when it's, when it's too, when it's big like that, you just got to get through as many people as possible. It's like machine gunning on Tinder. Hello, thanks for coming. Goodbye. <laughs> you have no time to evaluate or have a good conversation. You're just looking to get that interaction over with as fast as possible. It's like, hello, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. When you're machine gunning on Tinder, it's like, hello, you're pretty, you're on fire. Um, Amber, who emailed the podcast, was at the show. Um, and, uh, I also met her boyfriend, who I told her to dump, I believe. That was a, that was a fucking weird experience. It's weird meeting, like, the people with the crazy lives. From memory, she was just mad into threesomes and shit, and she had an open relationship with her boyfriend and a bunch of other girls. I can't remember, it's from a couple of podcasts ago. Uh, but it was fucking crazy meeting them in person I mean and she was cool I'm glad that, I'm glad that he didn't want to deck me and he enjoyed the show that would be fucking hell awkward hey man when do you get off telling her to dump me you fucking dog and I just get murdered fair enough If it, fair enough man if I was having fucking three O's with my girl and then some stranger on the internet told us to break up I'd be like you how dare you just try and destroy the only good thing in my life because if you have that I mean everything else in comparison is awful <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this shit, man. I'm, I'm happy that everyone's coming out. Uh, sorry that this, this podcast is a little bit 
I'm just so fucking tired, dude. We haven't had a rest day for so long. I thought today was going to be a rest day where I wouldn't have to do anything, but then we ended up having to fucking do the radio show, which I love, but, you know, I want to, I need a fucking break. I need to slow down. And I was like, oh, tomorrow I'm not doing anything. Not tomorrow we're fucking driving for hours, so we'll see. But uh, I'm looking forward to the shows in, uh, in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, Wollongong, and Newcastle, and there's tickets to all of them as well. Uh, sorry, this is a bit pluggy. I think I might end this one a little bit early. I don't think I'm going to go for an hour. Sorry, guys. I'm just so tired. Um, I'm going to do a miscellaneous bit at the end, and then we'll wrap this shit up, because I'd rather do a short one than do a fucking... Yeah, so, uh, what else has been happening in my life? Plus, I can't I can't be loud. And, and let's be honest, guys. Me yelling is uh, 70% of the podcast, so if I can't yell, I mean, it's going to be a fucking half-hour thing. All right, where are we? This lady's bit at the end. If you don't know, this lady's bit at the end is a part of the podcast, which sucks. It's the part where I answer questions sent in by listeners. If you have a question, email me at podcast at loosebeers.com. Summarize it in the subject line and I'll answer it if I think it'll be funny or I can provide some insight. Um, we just have one today. I do need some more emails, so please do send them through. Um, from uh, Max, I don't know what to do when I leave school. Hey Lewis, so I finished school at the end of the year. I have a part-time job and I still live with my parents. I'm not going to uni, but my parents are really pushing me to do some kind of tertiary education. Problem is, I have no idea what I want to do and how to do it. Any advice would be great. Thanks, have a shit one. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, I would say if you don't know what to do, don't fucking do anything. Don't jump into a tertiary education or a university course. I remember when I left high school, I didn't know what... I mean, I knew I wanted to do comedy, but I was like, oh, maybe I should do uni. And I enrolled myself in a music production TAFE course. What the fuck was I doing, man? What am I going to go to TAFE and learn how to become a fucking DJ? Could you imagine that? DJ Spears on the decks, fucking pumping it at cloud nine. Just rooting all the underage girls that are there illegally with fake IDs. And I know it, and they know it, but no one says it. <laughs> Fucking imagine if I got my certificate for and being a DJ mad cunt. Oh man, when I did that music course, it was like literally just surround... I, I want to be... I want to... I'm, I'm doing the course because uh, I want to... I want to be Will Sparks. I want to be a DJ. But instead of like... Doing uh, music and uh, playing other people's music, uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn for four years how to how to play other people's music. Like it was the dumbest fucking course. I think you could get something out of it if you actually realized that you were there to learn how to do music production. But fucking 90% of the cunts in there were just like people who just got their whole wardrobe from Culture Kings being <laughs> were like, hey, I want to be a DJ. Like, I reckon there were no shit. There was four people in there that had bought fake Facebook likes and fake Instagram likes so that they could be seen as a big DJ. But in reality, they were just followed by 90,000 people called Pajit from fucking Pakistan who gets paid, you know, half a cent every time he likes a page. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fucking stupid. Uh, I would say, dude, if you don't know what you want to do, and this goes to like everyone who's in high school, even if they're older than that, if they're in uni and they're doing something they're not sure on, just don't, there's no limit on uni at, at all. You don't have to do it now. You're fucking young as, if you're leaving school, you're what, like 17 or 18? You have, like, I, I'm 24. I still live with my parents, man. I'm only feeling like now I should start to move out when I hit 25. That's when I'm going to start looking at moving out, depending on what happens with radio and that. Um, so you've got like six years, if your parents are cool, of like living at home. Fucking take risk and just try shit. Try this, try that. Try out hobbies. Try out interests, try out jobs. Seriously, man, I really think that before you go to uni, you should go into the city and apply for jobs, or even not even go online and apply for jobs in the city and actually work a full time job for six months and see how that shit vibes with your life. If you can handle it, cool. Go get that uni degree that will get you a similar job. 
if you're going to be working in an office. If you can't handle it, hey, maybe you're gonna, maybe you should be a personal trainer or a tradie or or whatever the fuck, um, because it's one thing going from high school into uni, but full time work can be some soul crushing shit, or is some soul crushing shit if you're not doing what you want to do. So I would recommend people try it so they can understand. Oh shit, this is what full time work is. If I don't like the job, it'll ruin my life. Um, so yeah, just try shit, man. There's no stress. You don't have to start now. Talk to your parents and be like, Hey, so I'm only 18. I don't know what I want to do yet. I'm a child and I need some life experience before I commit to like fucking four to six years of my life to do a degree in something I'm not sure about. Give me a year or two years to figure out what I actually want to do. And then just fucking do that and uh, have a lot of fun, fuck around, but realize that you're also... This year is also kind of to find yourself and to soul search and to understand who you are and who you're supposed to be. <laughs> Alright, Max. So fucking relax, cunt. You're 18. Do whatever you want. Have some fun. You don't need to do uni. There's no limit on it. You can start at 20 and you still won't be old. You'll be like you'll be like older than, than the new people that you start with, so you'll have you'll have like that cool older confidence swag and you'll get way more roots than being the awkward 18 year old dude all right so that's what i'm saying if 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 not if not for the life experience do it for the roots all right i'm gonna leave it there guys thank you very much for watching sorry this one and, and listening sorry this was a bit of a short one but um i'm fucked today and i wanted to get up on sunday because uh i promised you guys i would and uh yeah sorry but this is it i'll be back next week uh i have sydney uh newcastle Wollongong and Melbourne coming up. They all have tickets left. Uh, we've added extra shows in Sydney and Melbourne and uh, I really want to pack those extra ones out. So please do come. Uh, and uh, Newcastle is almost sold out. So get on that if you're not already. All right. So thanks for listening, guys. Next week will be a bit of a longer one and uh, I'll be a little bit more fucking awake. I've just been working very hard. And, and once again, thank you so much to everyone who came to Brisbane. That was, uh, that was a fucking moment, man. That was I'll never forget that. Uh, yeah, it was really cool. I'm still, I don't know if you can tell, I'm still processing it just, just doing that. So uh, thank you so much, guys. I will see you next Sunday and I'll have a new video coming out for you in a couple of days as well. All right, see you later. Have a shit one. Bye.